everybody uh, welcome back to this class on ESD and uh, last class we are discussing about uh, ESD its role in technical and vocational education and training. So, today we will uh, just continue with that. So, that is we were talking about the green jobs, green uh, jobs, green skills all kinds of things. So, uh, so green jobs are not confined actually to the new green sector such as renewable energy or agriculture. But uh, green jobs means what is the mini with the minimum uh, carbon footprints. So, a global study on the skills for the green jobs actually uh, conducted by ILO international labor organizations. So, covering 20 countries represent 60 percent of the world population in, in uh, indicates that sweeping changes will take place in the skill profile in the existing occupation and especially in post pandemic, especially post pandemic and these online platforms and virtual workplace. So, the importance of the green jobs and the green skills have been enhanced like uh, uh, anything like anything. So, we have to focus on more on the green jobs, green skills, green competences and how to prepare our manpower, our human resource in that line and uh, again uh, to create more green jobs also employment to uh, generate regenerate new employments which are which carry the um, uh, minimum uh, carbon footprint, minimum pollution, minimums, uh, minimum disturbance to the ecosystem. So, let us talk about the requirements. So, given all that uh, given that all the jobs can should be uh, should be become it should become a very greener and more eco friendly and more sustainable etcetera, we need to develop a wide range of relevant skills and competences. So, let us see what are these competencies. So, the green TVET, green technical and vocational education training thus plays a very crucial role, crucial role in enhancing these creative entrepreneurship into innovative skills, competencies for the green jobs. So, therefore, these skills need to be uh, need to be underpinned, need to be included, need to be embedded in the curriculum in such a way that it, it uh, improves, it encourages, uh, it um, motivates the uh, learners to have to develop this critical reflection uh, or you know, critical reflection or having the positive attitude uh, and the values towards ESD, towards eco, eco friendly, uh, eco friendly system, eco friendly uh, behavior. So, many countries have already adopted this kind of things, many uh, have already adopted especially in um, European and uh, uh, Asian countries as well as the African countries, but let us provide how this new green sector can flourish, how this new green sector can uh, provide the um, uh, suitable trainings uh, training, uh, to, to nurture, to groom these kind of green skills and competencies among our manpower, among, among our people. So, the basic skills affect the basic skills like numeracy skill, literacy skill, uh, then ICT skills, these are considered as the basic skills. So, in including the basic skills, the critical uh, critical skills on these green uh, on these green competency green uh, skills it enables the worker to have an extra advantage over the jobs extra advantage over um, the green sector in upskilling and in upskilling themselves so uh, here again it shows that some of the clipping shows that uh, how to align this uh, technical and vocational education with the green society and the green uh, green economy that is the thing so, the green economy it has you know it has four connected uh, mutually dependent goals. So, let us uh, discuss green economy when we talk about the green society all automatically green economy comes in. So, this green economy has a four interconnected and mutually dependent goals versus that increase economic growth. Increase economic growth definitely will remove it will alleviate poverty by reducing um, by reducing unemployment by increasing the social inclusion, equity, equal distribution of resources and reducing the greenhouse emission, greenhouse gas emission. So, this is the first component of the green society and green economy and how to embed the TVT in that. So, green economy has these four interconnected variables. So, then the next next is the transitioning to the green economy. It is more of a is a more of a uh, planning, it is more of a long term strategy for the sustainable development. And then uh, just for the short term purpose or then just for the uh, poverty elevation etcetera, but it has a uh, long term planning, long term strategy, long term purpose. So, now like for example, in our government uh, all these 5 year plans, all these planning commissions, uh, new schemes and strategies, governments new schemes and strategies are actually a part of this kind of thing, how to transition, how to bring transition to a green economy from the present state of affairs 
to meet the to meet to respond to the global crisis to uh, the global crisis like the economic slowdown unemployment or poverty alleviation or um, you know creating more jobs for the um, for and developing the man skilled manpower all kind of uh, these are the global challenges global crisis so how to face this thing how to transit how to learn uh, transit how to mo mobilize how to re how to moderate our economy towards the green economy this is the second domain then the third domain is that educational and vocational training system to be capable of equipping all the individuals with this kind of competencies the third uh, third part is that training aspect that is the what sort of educational vocational training system should be introduced so as to capable so as to develop this capability this uh, this uh, competencies this skills uh, among the among our um, uh, resources among our individuals among our um uh, people so that uh, so that we can take the full advantage of this green economy so in order to and cash in order to leverage green economy we have to put such kind of training and competency develop, development schemes in the curriculum as well so the next is that uh, transitioning to a green economy okay transitioning to a green economy it promises uh, access to the new jobs okay it not only promises access to the new jobs but also creates the changes in the scope and characteristics of the existing job. so when we compare, compare to the our existing jobs with the green jobs it has feature it has the differences in its features in its operations in its characteristics so how the, how what are these key features of uh, this green economy so the skill development strategies also facilitate the extension of the green economy the skill development strategy is also facilitated so what are these things how to adapt to the evolution of employment sector then prepare the teachers and trainers uh, who can effectively transport their knowledge and the skills and expand the current um, current uh, scope of tva and delivery mechanism and enable the workforce to adjust to the technical shift so these are the primary areas that how to train not only just uh, changing the curriculum and introducing the tools is uh, will be enough but how to make the employ uh, make the people make the jobs more suitable towards this green sector and prepare the teachers and the trainers and to possess to learn to acquire the new knowledge and the skills and competencies which can be easily transferred to these uh, green jobs and expand the scope horizon of this um, technical and vocational education and its delivery mechanism towards the green jobs is scope and opportunities and enable the workforce to adjust to the technical shift that is the innovation that is coming up every um, every moment that is the te technical changes uh, innovative changes that is coming up how to again to train them also to update themselves in the technical shift technological shift as well so now the thing is that how to that means it's not just it's not just uh, uh, creating the green uh, green jobs or green uh, planning uh, policies etc but thing is that there are certain steps there are certain steps that we need to follow we need to understand so for that uh, because when the it is again it's a learning cycle it's a, a new learning cycle new uh, new phase of understanding the green tvt process so let us uh, let us uh, go step by step uh, in a progressive way and how can we introduce this tvt to green tvt concept the first thing is that the first step is that understanding the green tvt process the first thing that with the meta analysis with the um, detailed study with the in depth analysis we can now we have to uh, uh, we have to break it down into the systematic and inductive process in a sequential way so first thing that is that uh, clarifying the green concepts what is that greening concept it's a continuous process it's a continuing process it's not just only particular time a particular job etc so it's a continuous process how we have to understand it um, that is uh, it's a continuous process based on the economical social and environmental imperatives sustainability approaches within an institution and wide action first thing is that whatever uh, job we are creating whatever skill we are introducing whatever competency we would like to introduce that we have to analyze it from three dimensions first is that is economical aspect whether it is cost effective or not social aspects is implications for the society for the people for them and the environmental implications and the environmental implications that means how it is uh, uh, what what its impact on the environmental <coughs> ecosystem that is its imperatives 
for the environmental uh, ecosystem whether it is protecting, restoring or, or with minimum damage with a minimum carbon footprint. And so moreover, the sustainability approach also it is within the institution outside the institutions, within the country outside the country because again we are talking about this in the global context. So, next step is that next step is that um, under this uh, first step the next is making an institutional alignment and assessment the local employment needs. So, suppose when we are introducing uh, going to introduce or establish a uh, industry in a particular local, uh, local area, particular region, particular uh, uh, context. So, here we have to first of all assess the uh, manpower, the people there who are residing in and around that location and what are their needs, what are their skills, what are their um, the resources available in that area, then what are the skills, their, uh, what are their <coughs> competencies, uh, similarly all, all these things first thing is we need to assess, we need to assess the local people, the local employment needs, the again uh, what are the resources available and what are the skills and competencies or the advantages or can you can say this kind of uh, some traditional concept, traditional knowledge, the competencies are already available, we have to assess it. And now, after that we have to identify the local people's uh, need assessment. So, accordingly we can create the job. So, create the uh, local employment needs, what, the, what sort of people uh, learn employment or the um, jobs or the works actually the local people they need. Then at the, at the same time we have to look into the policies and regulations as the driver or the hindrance because whatever we want, we want to introduce or create we have to create it within the framework of uh, policies and the regulations. So, again whatever again we have to analyze what are the national agenda whether it comes under the any, um, any of the national schemes and the policy framework etcetera. Then again international commitments, so make um, international commitments like us because we are the we are uh, working on the global context also. So, being the, both the local needs as well the global uh, global uh, commitments, global uh, opportunities, global uh, responsibilities, both the things should align properly. So, even so whenever we are going to start in any particular entrepreneur, entrepreneurs, a particular uh, um, uh, jobs or the industry or uh, any entrepreneurship and enter, entrepreneur. So, we have to look into the these things, first thing is the local requirements, local resources available and whether it falls in the policy framework and rules regulations under the rules and regulations or not or is there any hindrance and impediment and hurdle is there then what what is the what is the um, policy of in the national agenda or national priorities and yes at the same time we have to align with the international commitment. So, these the steps are to be taken care of. So, in the first case then adopting the whole institution approach. The holistic institution approach is that taking to the totality that means the holistic development, the harmonious development in all aspects is not just about creating the new jobs or, or um, manufacturing or product or any or, or, or just training the um, human resource is not just one aspect, but focusing on all the aspects that is adopting the whole institution approach. So, that is to integrate in order to integrate the sustainability. Uh, so, we have to focus on these these uh, schemes like first thing is the green campus, greening the campus. So, how to make this ecosystem the environment as green as possible with more plantation mode rather uh, than more um, that means waste management policies etcetera, greening the campus first, then greening the curriculum and training. Thereafter, how to design the curriculum, so which will be with um, which, which will be more in the on the uh, software basis on the on the that means which uh, would create minimum carbon footprint and uh, also online training all these kinds of online uh, uh, online curriculums, MOOC courses all kinds of things, e-courses, online courses, how can we um, enrich our audience, enrich our um, people with uh, um, immense literature, immense training material, immense tools etcetera, but with minimum carbon footprint that is the greening the curriculum and training course. Then greening the community and the workplace and so far as the community, local community who are uh, directly related to this the community, the workplace that the environment surroundings uh, surroundings all these things should be taken care of. Now, here I can say put uh, the one example that is for example, the Tata, Tata companies uh, Tata, Tata, Tata steel be it Tata steel, Tata motors whatever. So, whenever they are uh, establishing any kind of industrial sector or manufacturing sector or whatever. So, not they not just uh, uh, they uh, just not only develop their own workplace, own infrastructure, own manpower, uh, own uh, you can say amenities and facilities, 
but at the same time they also develop the town seep also. So, that is the developing the town thing with other kinds of facilities like health um, facilities, education facilities, even shopping facilities, even um, you know um, exercise and uh, you can say gym, gym, uh, gym can and exercise facilities, entertainment uh, thing. So, they look into the all round aspects of uh, um, the human development. So, that is the greening the community in the workplace is not just focusing on the workplace, developing our workplace and the uh, area that we are uh, working uh, within, but outside this workplace that is the total township, total village or total area that we cover. Again greening the research, again simultaneously we have to update ourselves with the research and development from time to time because you know research is an ongoing process, innovative process, innovative approach which always, always enrich and boost our present uh, uh, practices, present uh, competences, present technology. So, the technological development and then the you know even the human resource also, the human needs also keeps on changing. So, um, to update ourselves research is very much important. So, greening the research, how to conduct the research simultaneously in a more eco friendly manner. So, that is the greening the research that is up to update ourselves with the more and more innovative research, how these research can also come up with the new ideas, new skills, new platforms, new um, ideas to uh, be more innovative, but again the focus again on the sustainability uh, approach, sustainable development, sustainability approach, sustainable uh, sustainability implications and um, uh, making it more greener in the terms of minimum carbon footprint, eco friendly. So, how to develop the community and economy in the in a very eco friendly manner that is by adopting a whole school approach. So, automatically we can um, build up a green uh, institutional culture, a work culture, it is not just about work culture, but it is also institutional culture, environmental. So, that means equal distribution, equal focus, equal importance to economy, society as well as the environment. So, that is the so, it should be built in, in uh, within our consciousness in it is a way as uh, we have uh, already discussed that is the paradigm shift. It is a shift in our thought process, it is a shift in our outlook, it is a shift in our um, affective domain that how do we feel about this, how to it is not just uh, taking care of our own um, residence, own home, but taking care of our planet, taking it, uh, but at the same time we are also going to Pro proceed and progress for the 21st century uh, jobs and employment second. So, now after all these kinds of planning then comes our engaging the teams, how can we engage our manpower or people. So, engaging teams like analysis of the stakeholder, again whenever we are say, establishing a uh, um, um, factory or industry or entrepreneur uh, and an entrepreneur entrepreneur uh, model. So, here here again we have to analyze the stakeholders, stakeholders like like in the classroom situation when we talk about the learners, we have to assess the learners needs. Sim similarly, in the in a business situation, in the in industrial situation, we have to analyze the stakeholders. So, analysis of the stakeholders who are directly uh, involved, who are indirectly involved. So, direct stakeholders who are directly the beneficiaries of the um, product or the uh, manufacturing or the service um, processes. So, analysis of the, stake, the stakeholders who are the direct stakeholders, who are the indirect stakeholders, who are the customers, who are the consumers, who are the suppliers, who are the investors. So, so all the stakeholders can be a partners in our learning process, all the stakeholders who are direct, indirect are the partner, learning partners. So, you know, we have to articulate the roles and contributions of each stakeholder, here we have to spell out, we have to explain that is the um, all the roles and responsibilities of each and every category of stakeholder. So, so these are the what are the thing these five approaches uh, approaches for the sustainability in the institution that is the greening in the campus, greening the curriculum and training that we have already discussed, then greening the research, greening the community and workplace, greening the institutional culture that just that just we have this uh, discussed. So, these are how to explain it elaborate it because you know we have to formally train all our stakeholders, it is not just about uh, how uh, just know about the um, discussion only, but in the bulletin or in the meetings only, but we have to create that awareness with more publicity, with more advocacy in through different media and different medium platforms. So, then so green research, greening the community workplace, greening the institutional call culture, all these things are uh, we have already discussed. Now, coming to the next step that is step 2 that is planning for the green 
greening of the TVET. Planning for the uh, greening the TVET, how to make uh, the technical and vocational education actually uh, that means, uh, actually uh, green. So, it means now initially it was the assessment, the need assessment and etcetera. Now, it is the planning for the green. So, raising the awareness and formulating the rationale. So, again when we are we are, we will, we are going to put it in the uh, formal platform, formal learning platform, then we have to raise that awareness and, and developing a kind of logic, a rational, a morality kind of rational from the economic, social and environmental institutional perspectives. So, why do we want to introduce these things? Oh, we have to uh, apprise each and every stakeholder, we have to um, um, educate each and every um, category of stakeholder regarding this, how it is directly and indirectly affecting um, our economy, our social, our environmental um, life uh, situations, institutions and the cultural perspective also, how it affects all these domains as well as it has the that it is collected to the globe, it is a, it is a collective awareness regarding the global impact, its impact, uh, global impact of these kind of schemes. So, for example, so or for example, introducing the manufacturing these new cars, new models, new ve ve vehicles, automobiles from every day, it is an, it's again in the manufacturing sector, it is an, uh, it's an innovative, it's every model is new model, new competition is coming up, yes, this taking up these. Um, uh, manufacturing sector or the um, uh, vehicle or the automobile sector uh, into the height of the its production is ok, but again how to make it eco friendly, how to make it sustainable. So, here, so that is an you might have observed in the uh, in the production uh, and manufacturing of automobile sector also, there is a competition that with uh, that means no with uh, renewable energy source like with minimum carbon footprints, with minimum fuel consumption, with minimum uh, carbon emission. Uh, so, how these vehicles, automatic vehicle vehicles, now the, the hydrogen <coughs> uh, hydrogen vehicles or you know electric vehicles and so many competitions are coming. So, again it is also an innovative way of making our um, uh, making our manufacturing and the service sector more greener. So, here first thing is that we have to create that awareness by formulating a rational, a logic uh, and ethics uh, of values like for example, how does it directly indirectly affect to our environment, it does our society, community, our economy, our institution and as well as the global culture as well. Then thereafter to develop a vision, a vision of plan, vision formulating the goal, goal setting. So, like for example, for every entrepreneurship, for every venture, for every uh, startup, we have to have a kind of vision, mission. Uh, Mm, goals, etcetera. So, we have to define it clearly. So, developing a plan, plan for the vision, formulating the goal setting, building blocks for the institutional green plan, like the five, uh, five object, five uh, uh, specific aspects we have seen and talked about that is the green campus, green um, works, uh, workplace, all kinds of things. Similarly, we have to formulate different plans, like uh, what could be the vision, how this vision and mission can be translated into the goals and objectives. And in order to achieve each and every goal, how can we build up the blocks uh, in the build up the blocks, units uh, for institutional greening plan, then promote the broader engagement, engagement of the stakeholders, how directly or indirectly they can be engaged. So, ownership of the process, who is going to take this, what type of ownership in this process, in this, uh, in this venture. So, ownership of the processes by different stakeholders, what will be the Mm, uh, ownership that means the of the process by different stakeholder articulated rights and responsibilities. So, so, here now we have to plan out like who are the direct stakeholder, what would be their roles and responsibilities and who are the indirect stakeholder, what would be their roles and rights and responsibilities that has to be clear if clarified properly. Then next comes, uh, next comes assessing the current realities. What, what is the actually present scenario that is what is the status quo right now. Assessing the current realities that large scale assessment of the current situation that in our initial stage we have to make a survey of this. What is the current situation, what are the resources available, what are the people's needs, what are their, um, what are the um, constraints, what are the, um, what are the shortcomings, what are the uh, 
um, uh, advantages of that locality people and so what are the more requirements and the, uh, all kinds of things that is to assess the current realities in terms of large scale assessment. So, foundations uh, for the knowing the priorities, resources and needs. Here after the large scale assessment or the survey, initial survey, we can categorize the what are the priorities of this area, what are the resources available and what are the shortages or shortcomings or the constraints on which the needs can be, the needs of the people needs, needs can be developed, the need assessment can be made. So, thereafter the developing an institutional greening plan of action. Thereafter, the uh, developing an institutional greening plan of action that is the greening priorities. How, how at every step, how at every step can we uh, emphasize on the green uh, greening that is eco friendly approach. Whatever we do, even if it is a, it's a conducting a meeting, conducting a um, uh, get together or um, creating the product or um, you know uh, selling the product all whatever may be the thing, how the green uh, greening approach, green approach, eco friendly approach can be given as the priority. So, so here we can also uh, we can also clear that the international green policy with a clear goal. So, in here also we can apply. So, timetable for action, timetable for action then uh, you know advisory committee who are then monitoring and evaluation committee who are going to uh, who are going to uh, apply it, who are going to monitor it, evaluate it and introduce new tools and assessment tools and techniques uh, to map it, to measure it, to evaluate from time to time. So, in this way, so we have to develop an institutional greening plan and plan of action which are going to be executed, uh, executed uh, from the very beginning with clear uh, roles and responsibility, with clear specification, with clear uh, objective action plans and uh, clear assessment and uh, assessment and evaluation pattern also from this because from time to time whatever we introduce from time to time we have to monitor it, evaluate it and uh, assess it truly. So, when we talk about the um, introducing the green uh, green approach, green job, green uh, TVT etcetera then again and, and to what extent it boosts uh, ESD or uh, sustainability then we have to have uh, suitable tools and techniques and to map it, to measure it, assess, assess it. Because men are, um, that means all, uh, definitely we have to analyze it on the basis of uh, its um, impact, both qualitative benefit, both quantitative benefit. So, how to measure, how to assess this quantitative and qualitative benefits by introducing a green plan of action or green curriculum or green policy that we have to definitely analyze and monitor on the basis of that on the basis of that feedback and assessment result then we then only we can proceed further. So, now for this time for the time being now we uh, stop here uh, in the next uh, next class we will we'll continue with the following steps. Thank you very much. <coughs>